The Big Red Kitchen Show is brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, The Pampered Chef Products provided by Consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza, Food Styling, and Photography. Kitchen Show. I'm so happy you, glad you joined us today. This is a show about former Nebraska Cornhuskers who, who played football for the Nebraska <laughs> football team who actually love to cook. They're great in the kitchen and we're going to be interviewing a former player today. We're going to hear a little bit about where they've been and what they've been doing since they left the stadium a couple years ago. So uh, hang on for that, but we also are going to have them show one of their favorite recipes, something that they like to prepare for their family and friends. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that. We're going to be doing a kitchen demonstration of a kitchen gadget that will save you a little time in the kitchen. Plus, we're going to do a wine pairing that's really going to set off today's featured dish. I'm Sherry Potter, and I am a chef. I'm a professional food stylist and food photographer, and I love to try out new recipes in the kitchen. And today, I tried out Jeremiah Searle's Elegant Elk Birds. It's really a tasty dish, and I can't wait to show it to you. But before I do that, I'd like to introduce you to my co-host, Angela. Hi, I'm Angela Waltman. I love to cook. I love sports, and I've made writing a career. So I brought all of these together when I made the Big Red Recipes cookbook, which features all former, former Cornhusker football players. And so we built this cooking show around the cookbook to bring a few of them on to tell us a little bit about their recipe, a little bit about what they're doing these days, and to be interviewed by us for your enjoyment. So today, we're very excited to have Jeremiah Searles with us. As you all probably know, Jeremiah played for us from 2010 to 2013 as an offensive tackle, but I won't tell you any more about him. We will let Jeremiah tell you himself. Yay! Hi, hey guys. Hi, Hi, very good. Jeremiah, welcome to Thank our you show. So much. We're so glad to have very you. Very good yeah, to have you on here. here. <laughs> so, elegant elk birds, definitely one of the uh, most unique recipes. <laughs> that I got for the cookbook, so yep. thank you for that. Absolutely. So tell me a little bit about the backstory um, about the elegant elk birds and where this recipe came from. So growing up, my dad, my brother, and I were all big hunters. We like to be outdoors. My dad's been hunting since before I was even born. And mom, on the other hand, is not a big gamey person. She doesn't really like the way the meat tastes sometimes or between the elk and the deer. But my, so my dad, for I think it was Christmas one year, got her a cookbook, uh, Elegant Game. And you could, she flipped through it, and she finally found one that she liked, and uh, it was Elegant Elk Birds. And mm -hmm. she, she loved it, so she wanted to make sure that every time we cooked it, it's off probably one of the best cuts of meat from the, uh, the animal itself. It's called the back strap. Mm -hmm. And so it's able, you can cut it really thin, you can tenderize it really nicely, and it doesn't have a lot of gamey taste to it. It's very sweet almost. And so she found out she loved it, and so it kind of just became a thing that every time we were able to be blessed to bring an animal home, that that was something mom was super excited to cook, and uh, it kind of became one of the Searles family uh, favorite recipes. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit about your background. You grew up in Colorado. Yep. And um, came, obviously, to, to Nebraska to play football. So tell me a little bit about your background in Colorado, why you chose Nebraska, and a little bit about what you've been doing since you left. Yeah, so like I said, I was a... Uh, I was, in, or not, I was recruited to a lot of different schools, and Nebraska was one that always was intriguing to me. It always was one that I grew up watching between the Colorado and Nebraska rivalry. And uh, one of the big reasons was the Big 12. But in between Big 12, Big 10, it, it kind of bounced in and out. But being able to become part of a tradition like Nebraska was probably one of the biggest reasons why I came. I thoroughly enjoyed why I was here. Coach Bo was nothing but great to myself and my family, and Coach Cotton as well. They were really big influences on me growing up through that time, going through college, kind of finding who That's you excellent. were as a person. So those were kind of the main reasons why I came here. Uh, as of right now, I actually leave this Friday, going to back to camp in San Diego. I'm a current member of the San Diego Chargers, going into my second right. year, finished my rookie year last year. 
and now we're heading towards year two and hoping to become a, more of a role player. I was on practice squad last year and looking forward more now to play and hopefully start. Awesome. And so offensive tackle, obviously you have to keep the weight on. Yep. So tell me a little bit about the NFL training table. How do they have you eat? What do you eat? We're curious about <laughs> that. Oh, yeah. So oh. we definitely we got to make sure that we stay weight because we have a goal weight. So when we leave OTAs in the off season, they tell you you have to be this weight when you come back for camp. And something that not a lot of people know is if you are over that weight, you get fined $545 a pound. Oh, my gosh. Oh my so goodness. it's a really good incentive to make sure that you're on <laughs> yeah. weight. So you make sure you're eating right. You make sure that everything you're doing right. They take good care of you while you're there. But when you're home, you got to be able to cook for yourself a little bit, which I'm not going to be. I'm not the best cook in the world. <laughs> I enjoy doing some. My fiance Emma, is actually the better cook in the household. So whenever she's around, she takes care of me pretty good. Excellent. Well, wonderful. Well, now that we've um, talked to Jeremiah a little bit, should we go ahead and bring out um, the ingredients that go into the elegant sure, elfberg sure. and let him sure. show us how it's done? Look at he's got. Well, one of the things that I liked about this recipe are these little pearl onions. They, are, they actually make the recipe for me. I'm a huge okay. onion fan. There's a bit of garlic in there. We're going to talk about crushing that up. The salt and pepper and tomatoes, little tomatoes. It's a really simple recipe. Very. And then, of course, we have Swiss cheese and ham. It's a little bit like chicken cordon bleu, except it's, it's, it's done with, with your recipe. Yes. It is done with uh, venison or elk. And the recipe that we have today, we're going to use not wild game. We're going to use tame game. Yes. <laughs> it's still be very good, I promise. <laughs> beef. But sometimes you can get a, a cut of beef that's a little bit tough. And so this recipe really works out well for a really tough cut of beef. Yes. So I, I thought it was great for that. I love the recipe because I've made it several times and I'm really, really, really enjoying it. Um, having a part of my little kitchen repertoire awesome. of mm. dishes Love that it. I like to prepare. Now, one of the things that we like to do when we start out in the kitchen is I always say start out with a sharp knife. Okay. Correct? Is that what you do? Do you start with sharp knife? Sure. Why not? We can go from there. I'll go with <laughs> you. Okay. Now. Okay. Like I said, so, I'm how, sure my, how, we just registered. Me and my fiance is registered. She was all about the knives. So oh, well, I'm sure that be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Talk about knives. Now, one of the things that people don't know about knives is a really good knife is cut at a 10 degree angle. 10 to 12 degrees, but a 10 degree angle is an excellent knife. Okay. So when you're sharpening a knife, you need to sharpen it at a 10 degree angle. So a lot of times when you see these fancy cooking shows, you see them up there, you know, running their knife like that and like that. And you probably don't know that that's really what they're doing. They're keeping their knife at a nice 10 degree angle. And it's pretty simple to do. And, and a lot of times you see them kind of holding it like this, but in uh, culinary school, I had one of the teachers say, hold your, st your steel <laughs> like <laughs> this, and and away. this way. It's a little safer. So Safety first, kids. Yeah, safety right. first. So, Jeremiah, I'm really, have you oh, done this before? <laughs> with a hunting knife, yeah, not necessarily uh, with a nice kitchen knife. Yeah, you do that with a, do that. So it's 10 degrees, right? Yeah, ten, ten. Figure your, do your math, do your math. 10 <laughs> degrees. Uh, so we're gonna go, and it's down, right? Yes, so yeah. So come down, down there, and, and then and you come on the other side, or is it like one side only? Other side, if you like. You Some people do a count. Kind of <laughs> yeah, isn't it fun? Kind of dangerous. And listen to that little that little zing at the end. That's really Sounds well like I'm pulling like a like a sword out. <laughs> yeah. Like the sheet. That's, that's really nice. And it looks really nice when you do it. Yeah. I love to see. I love to see a guy in the kitchen sharpening a knife. Yeah, there you go. Sure. See? Now you know. And then you gotta see if it's sharp. I'm yeah, gonna touch it because I might cut myself. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, now, but some people aren't comfortable with the whole using a steel. So, um, now, fortunately, uh, modern day convenience right here. This is this is a, a little sharpening. It's it's a honing. A honing, a honing part, and then it also has a steel in it. Okay. So, okay, when you hone a knife, you basically take out all the little ridges that happen when you're cutting with your knife. So when you hone, you straighten those out. And when you sharpen, you actually move the metal pieces around. So this particular gadget I like because you just, it's got the little directions right See that on the top there, little arrows. It's oh, yeah. easy, easy, easy. So run your knife right through it like that. And you can run it this way. And then you want to run it this way, and then that way. And typically on this one, you might do a count. You might do eight or 10 on, on one side of your knife, and then run it past the hone to just sharpen it, you know, to straighten out the edge. I'm confused. How about you? Oh, you're confused? Well, you see, there's little arrows, so it's very easy. Yeah, I think you just good. 
see you. Hold blade. See, hold blade against arrows. We could figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Try that. See if that's easier okay. than using the steel. So we're going to go one. Uh -huh. Go on this side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, because you're sharpening both sides of, of, your, of your knife. It looks awkward. It is awkward. <laughs> but that's the proper way to do it. All so right. yeah, All right. nice and easy. So if you don't want to go out and buy a steel or a stone, a nice simple way to, to do it would be to use just a nice little sharpening tool. You can fit it easily into your kitchen drawer. So that's my first little tip for the day. Got it. Sharpening your knife before you get started with your cooking. All right, so are we ready for the meat? Always. Yeah. Okay. Best part. Uh, I brought a nice piece of beef here for us. And Gemma, I'm going to have you just cut this to about the size that you would cut it okay. if you were going to be using a piece of elk okay. or, or just for this recipe in general. So you can use that nice sharp knife there and cut it up. And I'll bring out a couple of the other pieces. So we're going to tenderize it so we'll get a little flatter so you don't want to go Correct. too big. Oh, that is a nice sharp knife. Look mm -hmm. at that. I'm so glad we cut it. Yeah. And we're just going to do a couple pieces, so yeah. just do a, just a couple nice pieces off of that. I feel so fancy. I know, I know. There you go. Okay. Now, what is this cut of meat, Sherry? This is just as a regular, just a little sirloin steak. Sorry. It's nothing Not fancy. Not little. Yeah. Well, it's kind quite, of delicious, quite large. Actually. Mm. Okay, so we'll, we'll set this off to the side. Okay. Now, what you talked about <laughs> is is tenderizing yes. this, and the recipe says you need to tenderize it. Yes. You're supposed to put it between two pieces of waxed paper, but since we're doing this for TV. If we put it between wax paper, it wouldn't be as much fun. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to see it. So this particular little gadget is used for tenderizing. It's got this little sharp edges on the top. We have a, a, a wonderful consultant that works with uh, Pampered Chef, and this is one of their gadgets. And I love this one. But basically, just down like yo. Oh my. Yeah. Flip Love it over. It. Now, before we get into this, um, Jeremiah was telling us a wonderful yes. tenderizing story. Oh, let's And see so it. we would love for him to tell our audience. So when I sent them the recipe and I sent them all the pictures, we were actually cooking the elk birds in Durango, Colorado. It was the elk that my brother had uh, shot in the fall. And it was about a mile away from where he had taken it was where it was, but we had no tenderizer. And when we got to the hotel, the condo, we were kind of confused, like, well, what do we do now? And mom's like, well, you're big, figure it out. So we had an ice cream scoop, sturdy. You know, ice cream scoops are pretty sturdy. And I just flipped it over and then bow, bow, bow for about, took a lot longer than that, because that was actually really nice and easy. But I was waiting for someone to come knock on the door and be like, is someone dead in there? Or what are we doing? Because it took, it was, it was a solid 10 minutes of just tenderizing. But yeah, so I mean, this tool actually looks fantastic compared to the ice cream scoop that I have. Yeah, here. yeah, it's still breakfast. Exactly. So I'm, I'm gonna have you just pound, 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 get them as thin yeah. as you like to see them when you create this recipe at home. Oh boy. <laughs> Well, get your me. finger. No, mm -hmm. no, that's pretty sturdy. The board's pretty sturdy there. There we go. That'll be a nice one. Yeah, yeah, okay. One more, one, one more good one over here. Sure. Okay. It says in the recipe mm -hmm. that you need to make them nice and thin. Is that about the right? I think it's, yeah, that's about right. You can make them as thin as you want. Can you? Depending how many you want to make, because that kind of goes with it. Okay, and then it says that you're going to wrap them with, with ham. You're going to put some boiled ham. I just have some deli ham here. Perfect. And some Swiss cheese. Perfect. So, kind of demonstrate how you would wrap these if you were doing it in your little kitchen. And something I brought were these picks. I noticed in the photos that you use these nice long picks. Yep. And I, tell me why you use those long so picks. So, it helps when you cook them. So Mom, when she would do it, she would fry them each, mm -hmm. but it makes it a lot easier to keep everything inside yes. if you just have them picked together. Because if you're just trying to hope that they stay together, it doesn't usually often happen that way. So that helped. I think that was through many years of trial and error uh -huh. on, on Mom's part. I know. And I found these nice long ones. A nice, a nice thing about the longer picks is the fact that when you have guests over, you don't mm. want them to accidentally bite into a toothpick. And yep. these nice long ones, you're able to see them and pick Absolutely. them out. Absolutely. You have to remember, start. I've actually done that before. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> yeah. not fun. There's nothing like a toothpick in the roof. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not, not very happy. So to roll these, you just kind of fold this in half a little bit and put it inside here. 
like I said, this is all watch and mom for many years. Okay. Throw the cheese in the middle there. But like I said, it's a pretty simple recipe, but it actually comes out really well. And then you kind of just fold it over a couple times there. Mm -hmm. Throw the picks through it. It's super easy. Super right, yeah? simple, super, I mean, it's pretty quick actually once you get all the stuff together. Yeah, I like the long ones. You yeah, yourself. right. I know and, and I. And they, and they lean nicely when you when you throw yeah. them in the pan, you can kind of roll them around. So. Absolutely. When I first got the recipe, Elegant Elk Birds, I yeah, had, I had no bird? idea what to expect. Where did the bird come from? I couldn't from. tell you. It just kind of rolled through on Mom's thing, and it's through that book. We had that it. book. I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you. I'm pretty sure Dad got Mom that book probably before I was born oh. because he mm -hmm. loves to hunt, and we don't like wasting any meat that comes with the animal. Because I think that that's extremely wasteful. So the dad was like, I'm going to find something that mom likes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to find something she likes to cook, likes to eat, and then we'll go from there. And so, so far, so good. Perfect. Now, where do you typically hunt? I'm in Colorado. Colorado. Um, yeah, it's okay. just tough. I mean, hunting season's right smack dab in the middle of football season. Ooh. So that makes it a little tough. But So I haven't got to go out a whole lot, but I got to go deer hunting a few times here while I played in Nebraska, okay. which was really nice. But uh, my goal is to hopefully once football's done, Hopefully not for a while, but once football is done <laughs> for me. Many years. Yeah, many, many years. But hopefully that is, I'll be able to still go be able to go uh, elk hunting with my dad and my brother. Really for the first time since I think the last time I went, I was 13. Wow. Oh 13 or 14 goodness. just because it was just so tough to be able to do that with yeah. my dad and brother all at the same time. So how much does a, like an average elk weigh, like dressed out? So dressed out, I mean, so a full, a full elk can weigh anywhere between six to like 1,100 pounds. So they're, wow. they're, they're big, big, 611, they're big, big animals. That's as big as like a cow. Oh yeah, they're very, very large. I mean, oh, the yeah, bulls are the, yeah. the, with the males are much larger, than mm -hmm. the, but some females even are very large. Wow. So do the you best only thing shoot do, males or can you do It depends more? on the time of season. Okay. Uh, what I usually do is we go on the late season cow hunt. It's a cow is a female elk. And so we go in December. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I always say to people like, "You hunt cows? That's not fair." <laughs> no. But, and so we usually go late December, January time, and that's usually when it works out really nice because football was over in college, so we could go up. But my brother always had school, or just it just didn't work out that we all three could go together. So that's something I'm really looking forward oh, to. Oh yeah, he will really enjoy that. So look at how cute those are, little little elk birds. Now the other the other thing I wanted to talk about are the tomatoes in this recipe. Mm -hmm. It says you should peel your tomatoes. Yes. Did your mom teach you how to peel the she did not. I <laughs> left, did I left not. that one up to mom. Okay. Well, if you try to peel a tomato, it, t it doesn't typically work. No. All the skin sticks to your fingernails. It's really a mess. But if you take a, a little a pot of water and put it on your stove or put it in your microwave, get it to boiling, and you dump your tomatoes in for between 35 and 45 seconds, these skins will peel right, right off. off. Now, Just is it better to easy. use a full-size tomato, a Roma tomato, a cherry tomato? Does it matter? I think it's better. I mean, the littler tomatoes, like that size and stuff, actually work really well because you actually cook them inside. But you can also use the bigger ones, too. You can just put less in there, or okay. less tomatoes in there. But the thing that I will tell you is those things get scalding hot. Oh, I bet. And so, like, you <laughs> yes. see them, like, when they come out of the oven, you're like, oh, yeah, those look so good. And you throw them in your mouth, it can ruin your whole meal. So, <laughs> Let's put this warning, is watch so the hot this is And the toothpicks. This and is a dangerous toothpicks. recipe. Tomatoes and toothpicks. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that on toast. Well, thanks <laughs> for sharing all that information. Angela, could you talk to us a little bit about what wine would go what you good with our recipe bet. today? Now, Jeremiah tells us he's not much of a wine I'm drinker. Not. So as I get the wine pairing we chose, why don't you tell us what you usually drink with your elegant elk birds? Yeah, absolutely. So usually when we get a big meal like this, I like to go with a nice beer. Uh, <laughs> not, not like a Coors Light or a Bud Light. I can usually try and find a 312, a 312 Goose mm -hmm. Island, a, a wit beer is very, very well. A Coronado Orange, that's more of a micro brew out in mm -hmm. San Diego is one of my favorite beers. And I'm more of a wheat beer guy, so I think that that's something that I, I love going with it. Just a nice, heartier, heavier beer that can really complement with it. All right. Well, definitely try that. But what we also brought out was a nice Zinfandel. Um, red wines pair very well with any type of red meat. And Zinfandels, as well as Syrahs, um, pair very well with game because it doesn't overwhelm the flavor, it actually brings out the flavor. So what we have right here is a Zinfandel from our friends at Sea of Red. And Sea of Red is actually a, a wine company out of California, but um, the Sea of Red brand was made for Nebraska because it's a former Nebraska player, as well as a Midwesterner who now lives in Sonoma, who created this because they appreciate the tradition of the fans in Nebraska. 
And um, so they created the Sea of Wine brand to honor the fans. So we just figured it was fitting that we would bring one of the Sea of Red wines on to pair with the Elegant Elk Birds. I know amazing. you're not a wine lover, but would you try this Absolutely. with us? All right. This it's is a nice. Tea. Tea. <laughs> this is a nice little gadget that we also got from our friends at Pampered Chef. Um, I have not used it yet, so oh, let's see. I'm let's so see. It's to supposed see. to be very easy, so well, let's give it a this. whirl. So I believe you just hold on to it. And no, this isn't working. Oh, I don't know. Somehow. I know. Oh, I'm giving it to Sherry oh. or Jeremiah. You go for it. Up it looked very easy. And then it oh, there we go. There we go. So you put it here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and you now squeeze, and then you just don't. push it down. Easy. <laughs> yeah. So Mom always says, don't, easy, don't break the top off the bottle. Easy. <laughs> and then you just pull up on the gas. No, no, no. no. So pull up on the lever again. Pull. <sighs> Teamwork. Goodness. Nope. nope. Didn't work. Nope. Well, that's <sighs> so we're gonna try this again. Let's try it again. I don't think you went in far enough. Far enough. Nope. Go all the way oh. down to the very, very bottom, 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 bottom. Yeah, I think there. All right, so it's clicked. And now we just pull up. Yep. Here, it's teamwork. Anyway. Okay. I don't want to break anything. There. Yay. Success. Yay. Like said, all right. The <laughs> you can tell. Yes, but like you know, the, you, know but you, you have learned something new today. Absolutely. You he can now here. open up a bottle of wine. Excellent. That'll, wine make, that'll make Emma happy. Yes. Emma likes wine. There you go. You've learned something. And I've learned something. Thank Apparently, you. I don't Absolutely. know how to use gadgets. So, <laughs> who oh knew? I love it when somebody else has to use the gadget. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm used to the normal quickly. ones. Yes. I'm going to hand this over. <laughs> yes. I know, we need a little humor on this. I know, and to admit right. that I'm oh. defeated. So, oh. here's, here's to Did we want to try the Alfred? Oh, we're recipe. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna drink, drink first. Wine. There we go. Oh, yes. All right. Well, cheers. Thank you so cheers. much for having cheers. me. Cheers. Absolutely. Really Thank fun. you for coming. Absolutely. Excellent. Mm. I love very wine. Very good wine. So this is this is perfect. If I liked wine, I'm sure I would love that. <laughs> this has a lot of smooth tannins in it, um, which gives it the nice finish. It's a bold wine, but it doesn't have that um, aftertaste that you get a lot with some of the bolder mm. wines. So it's a very smooth wine, so I think it pairs very well Absolutely. with what we're about to eat. Very good. Well, we're just going to take one of these little guys off. So now you can see the big long toothpicks in them. Yep. Can you see them? And there is a little a little sauce that actually goes over the top after you get it all cooked. And you see those mm -hmm. yummy little uh, cooked up share onions and the tomatoes. Yeah, I think we'll just share one. Yeah, share is caring. Oh, that's right. Sharing. Oh, if you cut it up with a really sharp knife. Right? <laughs> <laughs> or cut it up with a sharp, the little sharp knife here. Because that's going to work best. Now, is this a meal all in itself, or do you usually have a salad that you pair with it? Um, what's really, the, the full meal look anything like? Anything you really can, like you want to put with it, you can. That's what kind of makes this great. I mean, Thank it you. goes great. You can throw some mashed potatoes on there okay. if you want to. Um, potatoes au gratin are always oh, really good, good with it. Yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorites. And then, yeah, a nice, easy, throw some lettuce in a bowl type thing. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it's called elegant elk birds, but it's so easy yes. that you I mean, it's not like you have to really prepare to make it. You can pretty much put anything you want with it, which is great. I mean, I've had anything from the fake mashed potatoes, like the Which Hungry Jack mashed yep. potatoes, to the actually mashed baked potatoes. I think like any carb really just goes really well with yeah. it. And it looks like a nice um, hearty winter dinner, maybe a holiday meal. Yes. Is what it reminds me of. You'll, but you'll have to. Watch the toothpicks. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm taking it out first. Yes. Watch the toothpicks. Yep, that's, that's the best thing to do. I gave myself one without a toothpick. Oh, sure. Cheater. <laughs> do you want to use the toothpicks? Do you want to use the gas? Uh -huh. <laughs> I see how this is going. The show. <laughs> Absolutely, no, why because, not? because you can help show off the gadget. Right, I'm going to use that sharp knife. There you go. Mm, okay. Mm. Look at that. It comes better and better mm. every time. It does. What do you think of the beef? That's delicious. I've actually never had it with beef. Yeah, That's I think fantastic. it works well. Mm -hmm. Again, for those for those folks at home who don't have the opportunity to go elk or deer hunting, this is a great recipe for them to try in their kitchen at home, which is what we want. We mm -hmm. want our viewers to try out these recipes and see if they like them at home. Mm -hmm. so. Anyway, let's wash it down. With let's some try wine. it with the wine. No, we don't say wash it down. See, mm. that's a, that must be a beer drink. <laughs> <laughs> wash it down. I don't know. <laughs> what is it? Sip it. Savor. Savor. Savor it with the wine. Savor it with mm -hmm. the wine. Yep. It brings out a little bit different flavor in the wine. It does make it a little bit more 
intense, mm -hmm. but it doesn't overpower the meat at all. So oh I think absolutely. this was a, a good choice. Yeah. You can also pair, um, obviously, if you're not a wine drinker or, or don't want to have an alcoholic drink with this, um, I found a nice non-alcoholic sangria that you can make. Oh, okay. So Tell us about that. It's pretty much um, your three favorite fruit juices with, with some cut up fruit of your choice and then a little bit of lemon lime soda. Oh, that's And easy. you blend that all together. That's more of a summery drink if you were to have this in the summer, um, but it's a nice, easy, non-alcoholic drink if you want something special to pair with this but you're not wanting a wine or a beer. Absolutely. So another nice little um, beverage pairing to go with our elegant health birds. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say when you're prepared, this is this is kind of a Sunday dish, wouldn't you say? Absolutely, yeah. This, this, is, this is like is the a family's home, yeah. everyone gets together, and it's, mom's been working all day. It is total comfort food. I, oh, yes, whenever, absolutely. you know, when I've had it, you know, I just I just want to sit down with it. And, and it really is a little bit of time to make it, mm -hmm. so it's a nice, you know, we're trying to encourage both men and women to work in the kitchen together. So this is a great dish that two people could prepare together because you've got someone who can, you know, be taking care of the meat and yep. someone who can be prepping the vegetables. So, you know, it is a nice dish that you could use as a couple to prepare for, for your family yeah. and friends. Yeah, it's like I said, we made it with mom and yep. it was the whole family. Got it. It's yes. kind of, it was easy. It made everyone want to come in and do it all together because it, it reminded us of the story of when we yes. went hunting with mom dad and then mom enjoyed making it with oh, us nice. and so it ended up working out really well the whole family could be in the kitchen yep. and then you all get to sit around and enjoy it together Absolutely. which was really fun and if you do want to go on our website for the cookbook um, bigredrecipes.com you can see pictures of jeremiah and his family cooking this wonderful meal that was great to see that yep. everybody getting involved everyone looks so happy which is what <laughs> cooking and eating and should be right. all about yes, that's that's right. Right. Yeah. so definitely go check out the website there's there's more on the site than just what's in the book so you can see extra things from all the players as well as find out where they are now find out why they chose the recipe and some other fun things. So well, that about wraps up our show for today. Oh, we are, we are I know. so happy that you came, Jeremiah. Um, if our viewers at home would like to hear more about it, Angela just talked about the recipe book. We'd love that. But until next time, um, we'd like to say God bless, and we'll see you again in the Big Red Kitchen. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for oh, having me. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And again, a little shout out to my wonderful crew. Thank you so much for all your hard work. We appreciate every one of you. So should we try a little more of the wine and the, and Let's the, do and it. the food? Why not? The Big Red Kitchen Show was brought to you by Markle Auto Group, Salt Restaurant, Wren's Display, the Pampered Chef products provided by consultant Heidi Lepold, Sea of Red Wine, D. Ford Family Dental, Corporate Creations, D. Tendenza Food Styling, and Photography. <laughs>